Here are some apologists who want us to believe that logic is magic. What is a materialist atheist? It's someone who believes that everything in the universe is made of matter, molecules, and nothing outside of that can exist. See, this is why I prefer the term physicalist rather than materialist. I don't think even most people who call themselves materialists believe that energy and space-time don't exist. I don't believe that anything non-physical exists, but there are plenty of things that are immaterial that are still physical. That means a transcendent God cannot exist because God is a spirit. But if that's the case, how can we explain immaterial realities like Laws of logic. The laws of logic describe the boundaries of what our physical brains can do. They describe physical phenomena. I believe in the law of non-contradiction, for example, because if I try to imagine something both existing and not existing at the same time and in the same respect, I find that I can't. That's a limitation of my physical brain. There's nothing non-physical about it. Morality. Love. Morality and love are also things that physical brains do. Justice. Justice is a social arrangement. It is a way physical entities, that is to say humans, try to regulate one another's behavior. The conscience. The conscience is also something that one's physical brain does. Those things are objectively true. Well, no, those are things, not claims. Only claims can have a truth value. Things cannot. Yet, if you're a materialist atheist, you have no grounds to justify their existence, but you use them every single day. Why would I need to justify their existence? I suspect that what this guy means is that I have no grounds to explain their existence. This, however, is false. There is nothing about any of the things he listed that cannot be explained by the behavior of physical processes. Now, I know I said in previous videos that morality is a very strong argument for God, but I must say that the laws of logic, man, this is perhaps the strongest case for a transcendent God. Why would laws, which describe the behavior of physical processes, be evidence of anything non-physical? Let's get right into this video. Well, first of all, as a materialist, what are the laws of logic made of? That's like asking, what is movement made out of? I think Frank is conflating the intangible with the non-physical. Movement is not a tangible thing, it's not made out of anything, but it is still a physical phenomenon. It's a behavior. It's something physical entities do. Similarly, the laws of logic are descriptions of the limitations of what our brains can comprehend. So they are concepts with we, which we use to uh, think about what is true. Okay, right. but do they exist independent of human minds? They seem to apply to more than just human minds, like logic circuits, for example. But that doesn't mean that they are not physical, because human minds are not the only physical things. A certain phenomenon would exist. The, the ability to logic would not necessarily exist, but the phenomenon of nature would still act in the same way that it does if there wasn't a being to comprehend them. I don't know if I followed you on that. Would these laws of logic exist in, if there were no human beings on the earth, would the laws of logic exist? No, but the physical behavior that they were invented to describe presumably would. Now this is a very good question to get the wheels turning. Now most atheists will say that the laws of logic are human constructs or, or concepts that we invented. In other words, if humans didn't exist, the laws of logic wouldn't exist. That's right. The laws of physics wouldn't exist either. That doesn't mean that the behavior they were invented to describe would be any different. But that begs the question, how did the first humans, if they invented logic, how did the first humans understand each other? They could understand each other because their brains still functioned according to the regularities that the laws of logic were invented to describe. You don't need to know the laws of logic in order to understand something. The understanding comes first, and then the laws of logic were invented to describe what we do and don't understand. I mean, how did the first humans recognize the law of non-contradiction without presupposing the laws of logic to begin with. Well, as I already explained, I don't believe in the law of non-contradiction because I presuppose it at the outset. I believe it because I've tested it and it consistently matches my experience. Any time that I try to understand how something can both exist and not exist at the same time and in the same respect, I consistently fail to do so. I believe this law as a consequence of this experience rather than presupposing it. Any time I learn about a law of logic with which I was previously unfamiliar, I mentally test it like this. I don't just take it as a given. I don't presuppose it. So even if you say humans created the concept of logic, 
the act of creating the concept is presupposing the laws of logic. No, it isn't. The laws of logic are the consequences of our experiences of how our minds behave rather than things we presuppose prior to that experience. See, I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a good question to ask because I, I think the fundamental nature of reality would remain the same, but there wouldn't be an entity to comprehend them. Right. The laws of logic exist independent of human minds. No, they don't. The regularities they were invented to describe do, but the fact that physical things behave with regularity and consistency does not mean that there is some transcendent being imposing that regularity and consistency. In fact, if these laws didn't exist, there'd be no way you and I could speak to one another, because if you had your own independent laws of logic and I had my own independent laws of logic, we couldn't communicate. Well, the only way that would be the case is if your brains worked drastically differently. Because the laws of logic are ultimately descriptions of how our brains work, they are still descriptions of physical phenomena. The laws of logic that we're using are external to us, they're grounded in God's nature, and they allow us to communicate with one another. They are only external to us in the sense that they seem to describe the behavior of many human brains and even logic circuits and other physical phenomena. It doesn't follow from this that they are therefore grounded in anything non-physical. We can't even be certain that they allow us to understand everything physical. There may be physical phenomena in the universe that we will never be able to make sense of given the way our brains function. Facts. The laws of logic exist outside of human minds. No, they were invented to describe the physical behavior that seems consistent among human minds and things like logic circuits. You're conflating the laws with the physical behaviors that they were invented to describe. If humans created logic, every human being will have their own laws of logic. That's like saying that if human beings created speed limits, every human would have their own speed limit. However, even though each person doesn't have their own individual laws of logic, there are still different kinds of logic that are applied to different contexts. There's Aristotelian logic, Boolean logic, quantum logic, paraconsistent logic, etc. An argument that can be valid according to one variety of logic can be invalid according to another. While these logics can be contrary to one another, they can each be more useful than the others depending on what you're trying to accomplish by using them. This seems to show that no one logic is the true logic of the whole universe. No one logic extends to every scenario in the universe, let alone transcending the universe as a whole. And no humans would be able to understand each other. It will not work. Logic would be subjective and logic is not subjective. It doesn't follow from the idea that logic is an invention, that it is therefore subjective. The days of the week are cultural contrivances, but that doesn't mean that whether Wednesdays come after Tuesdays or vice versa is subjective. It's not just a matter of opinion. That fact isn't evidence that Wednesdays and Tuesdays have some transcendent existence. Logic is an external law. The question is, where did that external law come from? The same place all other physical laws come from, the people who invented them to describe the physical phenomena that they observe. Now maybe what you really want to ask is, why is it that our brains seem to behave so consistently? Or in the case of the laws of physics, why do things behave with such regularity? I think these questions assume that the default state of reality is chaos, and that order can only exist if it is deliberately imposed by some consciousness. Or maybe you want to know why things are the way they are instead of being some other way. This assumes that the way things are was ever free to vary in the first place. These are baseless assumptions. Every law has a lawgiver. So if every law has a lawgiver, the laws of logic also have a lawgiver, and that lawgiver is God. Not true. As Bertrand Russell explained, the laws of physics, and I think this applies to the laws of logic as well, are not behests. Only laws that are behests have lawgivers. Physics and our brains are not obeying these laws. They are simply behaving the way they do, and the laws we invented to describe these behaviors are not transcendent impositions that will send a gamma ray to physics jail if it violates the law of conservation of energy. The idea that something must be keeping these things from behaving chaotically assumes that chaos is the default state of reality. There is no reason to make this assumption. The laws of logic originates from God's mind. If they're grounded anywhere else, they will be subjective and meaningless. 
This isn't even true of regular legislative laws. Does the fact that the laws of your town or state or country are created by human legislators mean that the question of what is or is not legal is subjective and meaningless? Laws can be open to interpretation, but that doesn't make the question of what is or is not illegal subjective in the same sense as the question of what is the best pizza topping is subjective. And it certainly doesn't make laws meaningless. But this atheist doesn't seem to agree with that. I, I think that's a misapprehension of the idea. Uh, but um, well, that, why is it a misapprehension? Well, because and I, how do we apprehend anything without the laws of logic? We apprehend things with the neurological functions that the laws of logic were invented to describe. The fact that these functions behave with consistency that can be described by laws in no way requires any transcendent being to externally impose that consistency. everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.